All right, hello everyone, this is Christian again. So in this video, we're going to continue from the previous video where we connect databases using uh, the MongoDB uh, library. This time we're going to do something similar except we're going to use a program called Mongoose, which is an ODM or object data modeling program. It's like a driver program really that talks uh, between Node.js and MongoDB. But it's a much more robust program and let you do a lot more than just, you know, simple connections. So we're going to operate, I mean, update this uh, app here using Mongoose. Okay, so just to a, show you a very quick recap. Last time we looked at this site over here where we um, did some operations, if I don't, if I remember, okay. So we, we'll do something similar using these CRUD operations. So all these functions, the insert one, insert many, the, um, update, delete, and so forth here, okay? So Mongoose uses these similar functions um, to interact with the Mongo database. So you see that using this Mongo uh, uh, functions are almost the same as the Mongoose. And that's a good thing, all right? So, <clears throat> excuse me. First, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this file. So we're just gonna keep everything here, or most of the setup. The only thing that we're going to change um, is the mongoose. Okay, so I'm going to make a copy of this and we'll keep the copy, but we're going to go ahead and change the original one. Okay, so what I don't need here are the Mongo database. So we're going to scratch that. We'll keep the phone number, everything here is the same. Um, this is the same. So we're not going to use this. Okay, I'm just going to show you the thing that I need. So these will be gone. Uh, actually, you know, let's just let's just get rid of all of these here, okay? And then uh, these down here will be um, a little bit different, but let's clean this up for now, and let's not confuse ourselves. All right. Um, so uh, first of all, we need to go ahead and go to the terminal and install a library called Mongoose. Okay. So let's see. This is still running. Let's. See, what is this one here? And that's the app. Okay, so the app is still running, which is fine. Uh, I'll leave it running for now. And then we'll go to the, um, oh, I have so many now. Let's cancel all of them. Okay, so confusing. All right, so so far side, we go to the DB Connect. Okay, um, all right, it's going to do npm install, and it's called Mongoose, okay? So typically you want to install MongoDB as well, but we already installed that already, so we don't have to do that again. Okay, so that's all we need. And we can confirm in the package JSON file, we do have now MongoDB and Mongoose. All right. So um, yeah, maybe I want to install cores as well, because we're going to try to access this API from the front end. So you also want to make sure that um, course is also installed, okay, to allow uh, cross servers, all right. So, um, okay, so good, that's you now good to go. And so let's update this a little bit. <clears throat> so we've got the connection going on here. I'm gonna go in and uh, install, um, um, import the mongoose. I'll call the same name, require mongoose. Okay, so I will do everything here in the same file. Typically you wanna spread this out into you know, their own separate files, you import them in. But what do here all in one file, and then once you see the whole big picture, then if you want to refactor and move them around, we can do that, okay? So I'm gonna move this down to the bottom so we're not confusing, uh, confused with it's all these other APIs. Okay, so we got that going on. And then um, MongoDB, that looks good. All right, so let's do some of the middleware first, okay? So these are your middleware set up. So first we're gonna use the um, express handle, uh, express uh, your encoder. This is for um, accepting data from APIs from the external source. Okay, you need to do that. The next one is to use the JSON file. So the data should be in JSON format, the prefer data structure format. And then also wanna get the um, I'm not going to use it, but in case, just in case anyway, if you do want to use it, again, this is just very typical uh, setup, okay? Public folder, I don't have one there, as you can see, but you can put one there for any public data in the, in the view. 
Um, and then we also want to use the course, okay? So use and then see the course, you invoke that. So this is just basically to whitelist uh, all incoming IP addresses. That's all I'm doing here, okay? So that is all for that um, thing. And then I'm gonna move this down here. Maybe it makes more sense to put it down here. So we're gonna clean up a little bit here. And then we'll do the DB connection here, okay? Using Mongoose, right? I'll put here Mongoose, so you know. Okay, so the this is, okay, this is good. Now, typically when you connect to Mongoose, if you don't specify the database, then I believe by default, it will use the database called test, right? So typically you put right here at the end of the port number like this, right? If you don't put it again, that's the default. If you have your own database, then you wanna put it here, okay? So I'll call my unit six DB. That's the one I use. If you don't include it here, of course you can include it later on too, but um, I'll show you, if I remember, I'll show you. Okay, so we got that set up. Um, and then the next thing we wanna do is really just to uh, make the connection, okay? <clears throat> so we, we use this object here to make the connection. Now, Mongoose make, if you call the connect function, I believe it will just make one single connection to your database. If you want to make multiple connections, like different connections to your database, then you want to put, um, uh, there's a function called create connection, okay? So this one here allows you to create multiple different connections to your database. But for us, we're just gonna create one. So we just call it connect right away. So it's gonna run the connection. Inside this connect function, uh, uh, we're gonna pass in the URL, which is this connection string right here, all right? So basically you put MongoDB URL and that is pretty much it. This is very simple like that. However, because you want to make sure that it's successful, you also want to make sure that you check and catch any error. So typically you can, you know, um, because this function here actually returns what's called a promise, right? a promise object. And usually you, know, you need to, um, you know, resolve those promises. So basically you do a connection and then over here, you put a dot notation dot, and then you put then, just with the up and and then you catch. Very similar uh, structure if you're using with the fetch API or promises, you have something very similar to this. So I'm saying is that you made the connection. If it's successful, then the result of this connection, which is the connection information about this database system comes in here. We put it into a result and then, you know, you can do something like this. You can show it, you know, or just say connected. So we know. If you want to see what ins is inside, then you would log the result variable, and, and that would show we show it. Maybe we'll just put here you know, results. You can see it. Okay. And if this error, then we're gonna catch it right down here. And, and then we'll just put here again. I will have a function call. Maybe handle error. We're passing here the error. And there's a, a message object called message, and you just want to grab the message and, and so you can see what that is. Okay. So let's put down here function handle error and takes the error. Uh, this is actually, yeah, it's an error already, which is, which is just a message already. And we're just gonna console log that. So you do it, make it a little bit nicer, but I think this is enough for our example. Okay, so that is the handle error function. And then, um, yeah, so that's it for that one. So you made the connection. And the next thing I want to do is usually you want to create a speed schema. Okay, so I'll put a number here. So the number one, uh, step one here, right? Step one is you made the connection that can go together like this. And then step two, usually you're going to create a schema. Schema is like the structure or the shape of your data. Right, um, so it's like a, a interface, if you want to call it that. So the schema, we're going to give it a name. And in my example, we call it student, right? I think, um, or yeah, student. So we're going to call a prompt called um, student schema. I'm going to call the mongoose up here has a property or a class or object 
called schema. So you can put, you're going to instantiate a new mongoose dot schema. You pass in here is the object. Okay, that's step two. And then step three, I uh, can't type today, is you're going to create a model. Okay? The model is really just the actual documents. Uh, no documents, um, what do you call this one? The collection, okay? Or we call this the table data, right? The actual data itself. This is the database. We need to create the model. The model is the actual table or collection. And then we can insert data to that, right? So the step four would be to, um, you know, up crud. After that, you can do crud, okay? So that is here, the schema. Inside here is an object. So again, back to this again, what do we need? The object is the shape of our uh, data. So if we go back to the MongoDB program, here is our data. This is the object, the shape of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, basically, well actually, um, how do I show this? I can view this as in a, like that, okay? So I'm gonna copy this, just copy one of those, and I'm gonna paste it right in here. Uh, where'd it go? Okay, right in here. Okay, so, so I, I probably should, I don't need the two curlies, just one. So this is our schema. This is the ID or the primary key that MongoDB handles. So we're gonna ignore this one, okay? And we'll leave it out. So these are our uh, information. So the keys will stay as is. And then the values will here will be just the data type. Okay, what type is ID gonna be? So in this example, this one is gonna be a type number. So I could just, I could put a number like that and that is good to go, okay? However, if you wanna add more, um, constraints to this ID, then you want to wrap this inside an object. And then this will have the property of type of number. And I also want to say this is also required. You put the required attribute set to true. If you also want to make it unique, then you put unique here so that you don't have duplicates. Make that to true as well. Okay, so those are the things that I would add to this one. And then these will be just, you know, um, the string. So you put it again, type. It's going to be of type string and it's going to be required. Okay. And you can set minimum, maximum, and so forth here. But I'll just, I'm going to just do that. Copy, copy here. Email. Maybe email should also be unique, right? You can have a duplicate email. Um, I don't know. Or you can, we can make it unique. Uh, this is also string required, and then the IP address should uh, require, but then it may not be unique, okay? All right, so that is the schema. As you can see, the data structure of this document and just the type, or if you think about object, it's like the interface, okay? So once you get that schema, then we're gonna build the model based on this schema. So over here, Gonna go to the next step is we're gonna do a mongoose again. Oops. Model function, it takes a string of the name, which is the schema, which is called student. Actually, no, I made it wrong. The, the, the first one is the name of the, the table or the collection, okay? So we already have one called student. Now, MongoDB prefers, I mean, Mongoose prefers you to use the lowercase name for your um, collection and also the singular form. I mean, I think it doesn't really matter, but if you put a singular form, the Mongoose will automatically convert this to a plural form, okay? It's just how they work. Um, so I call it student, call it student, and student. If it's already plural, it's already plural. And if you already have a collection called students, then it's not going to override it, all right? It's not going to wipe out your, your collection or we'll just use it. If it's not there, then it will create a new one, okay? So that is a security measure that you wanna make sure, um, you know, that's uh, taken care of. So I have, I call it students in lowercase. So therefore I'm gonna keep this as is, all right? So I'm not gonna um, and change it. It's not going to override either. But my schema is indeed the same structure as what I have already. If, it's, if it doesn't match, then you know it, it's not going to destroy your current data, 
It's just that from here on, if you add more data using this schema, then the data will conform to this schema. That's all. That's why it's kind of flexible in Mongo database, right? So um, that is for that one. Um, and then that is it. And then usually you want to assign this to a variable so you can use this again when you make all these operations. So when you do the CRUD, you need to know what table or what collection you are making the uh, operations from is basically from this one right here. If you don't assign a variable name, you have to call this every time like this, right? Find like that. And you don't want that. You want to say something like student find. So you would put here const student is equal to that. So this is the student model, right? <clears throat> and then the crowd will be find, uh, you know, update, delete, insert, right? Okay. So that is um, the typical setup for Mongoose. Now, I mentioned earlier that if you don't put your database here, then when you make the connection, Mongoose will automatically use a test database. And if you forget to do that, you may wonder, hey, where's my database? Where'd it go? Um, so that can be like confusing, right? So if you forgot to put here, then what you can do is you can put right in the connect uh, function. The second parameter here is the object over here. And you can override the key called DB name. And you assign that with your database. So you need six DB like that or seven, right? If you don't have one, it will create one for you also. Okay. So you can do it here or you can leave it here or you can, if you leave this out, then it will override whatever it was, which is the test one. Okay. So up to you. And we can leave it as is like this. You can see how this works. Okay. So now um, I think that looks good. So let's go ahead and test our program. I'm gonna delete all this back again. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do this. Okay. So I'm just showing you that. That's how the functions for the CRUD. So the CRUD is basically these APIs down here. So we have this just very generic one. So here is the get all students, right? So we use this is the DB. I call it DB before because I'm using the MongoDB uh, library, but this time I call student. So here basically it's similar. It's gonna be just student.find. And the functions are, I think it's identical. I think it's probably the same, but because Mongoose automatically converts these two object array already, so we don't have to say to array. If you do that, it doesn't work as far as I know. It's just find and it'll be just like that. And you still have to call them asynchronously, okay? That's why you call by functions here must be async so that you can call them using the await. If you don't do that, it's not gonna work. Right, so that is that for the get. Same thing down here, you get the IDs as before, and they want to change this to say student. And then again, we drop the array over here. Um, same thing here. You can see it's very similar to the MongoDB um, library. And that is it, right? Very simple like that. And we're going to test and see if this works. So let's save this and go to the terminal and let's run this. So mpx node mon, hopefully there's no error. Uh, okay, well, some errors already, of course not defined, okay. Um, did I not import that in? Uh, oh, I did not import yet. I use it right here, but I didn't import it, so good catch. Okay. That should solve it. And here we go. So you can see over here, it's already running and it ran, as you can see, it ran already. And then as you go down the code here, right? It goes down here, here, and then it goes and made the connection, successfully connected, and then it sends the result to the console down here. What you see here is actually the result of this. So if I expand this all the way up, and if you scroll all the way to the top, you're gonna see that when I made the connection, actually it doesn't show all of them. But that is the result here, okay? It's too long, so it's kind of like, and I can't see all of them. Let me see. Again, let's see if it loads. There you go. Let's see if I go up, how far it takes me up. Hopefully enough. And keep going until I find that message says connected. Um, you see some data already. Okay, data information about our database. Here's the unit 6 DB. 
uh, phone number stuff right here. And then keep going, there, there it is. So I ran the gnome on here and it ran the app and then connected, right? This message here. And then what after that is this connection string information. Okay, so just to show us that it is working now. All right, so I'm gonna turn this off. I don't wanna see this again, every time. So every time you say this program, it runs it again and again. So it makes a connection every time. But once the app is running, it only runs it once. It'll make a connection once until you reboot the server, right? So if you don't reboot it or if you don't close it explicitly, the connection will stay connected, okay? So now let's go ahead and test these APIs down here. Um, I think it's still launched it before. So here is the API. And let's go back to the main students page. As you can see, it launches all the data here, right, already about 103 of them. And if you wanna get the student ID of one, which is this guy here, which is Jillian, then you put ID, I think we have the ID and then slash one, okay? And then slash of 100, right? And then we have the gender, right? And again, it's case sensitive. And I figured out I have, I did it right yesterday, yesterday, but I just put it in the wrong place. So you can see all the mail. If you look at the gender, um, if I can find it where it is, it should I show you all the mail over here, right? All these uh, only mails. Okay, so here is what I um, we had to um, uh, make that case insensitive thing. So when you use the find function, um, especially when you test for text strings, you can use the regular expression or you can set the collation over here and you have passing at the object. And one of these is the locale. And we want the locale to be of type English because I'm using English text, okay? Otherwise you would choose like Russian or uh, um, Arabic or Chinese or whatever you want to put it here. And then the second is the string property. And this could be either one or two, okay? It's just those two types. And what this does is that, is that basically, there's a lot more properties here. It's basically to let you type these data without case sensitivity. Okay, so if I save that, go back to the browser, and now if I search for uh, mail, right, you can see everything comes through fine. Again, just to make sure it does work, okay? So you can see now it's fine. All right, so that is the CRUD operations for the find and find all. Find one, find all based on gender and so forth here. But typically, you know, uh, you can have all sets of APIs. It'd be as, you know, um, let's say uh, creative as you want, but we're gonna look at just the student here, the ID, uh, and wanna do some of the other operations like the put, post, and delete as well. Okay, so I'm, for this example, I'm gonna ignore this one here and I'm making it simple, okay? So we're gonna pick based on the ID only. So we would do that. And then I'm going to push this all the way down. I don't need this here. Then we're gonna do the other ones. This is the uh, post. I'm going to go to the same IP ad the address of the students. And we're going to call this async again. And, and, um, and then we're going to have the rec response. Those things set up as, as above. But this time, we're going to add some data, right? And we're going to do something like, um, just so it does work. Okay, I'm going to put here, const put here data, it's equal to one of those information. So the one I have up here, right? I can copy, actually let me copy one of the uh, existing ones over here. I'm gonna copy this again. And uh, let's do one more time, just to make sure I really have a copy of that. I'll put it right in here. Okay, so again, I'm gonna ignore this part and we'll just keep the rest. And I'll put here um, ID of one, 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 and then we'll put here um, uh, Harry it's Potter in H Potter at, um, I don't know, wizard3.com. And then gender is a uh, uh, male and IP address is just like, okay, so whatever, right? So when I create that object or the data, and then we're going to do a uh, const result is a weight, and we'll do a student dot insert one. Okay, insert. 
it should be one. If it's now we use the instrument menu, insert one, and then just pass in the data, which is this data here. Okay. And if it's successful, we're going to send the result back. And the result will be the default result, whatever MongoDB returns, which is an object of some information. Okay. So we'll do that using the post. And since I can't not test it here, I'm going to launch Postman. So here's Postman. And then the IP address for this is, I think is at 9,000, okay? So 9,000, here we go. We get, and we get the message high here. So if I go 9,000 dash students, you get all these students here, okay? So this is the API uh, tool for testing your, um, your cooperations. So here we go, we get a hundred of them. It tells you somewhere, I'm pretty sure, um, but we get all the data here. Okay, so now I'm going to copy one of these. Um, well, actually, I'm gonna to go to the uh, post. And we're gonna go in inside your post here, the body. I put something here, you can ignore this for now. I can leave it blank, it doesn't matter because what I'm doing is that when I run the post, I'm going to insert the data using what I have here, right? This is something I create. So it doesn't matter, I'm gonna insert that to the database. Okay, so let's see if this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and then click send. Okay, so I got an error. Same something is, is not correct. If I get this kind of message, something is wrong, all right? Uh, otherwise you get a more uh, uh, um, a better response. So if you're not sure what it is, you can click the view in the console here. It will tell you what the error is. It says something like, um, let's see, read reset or something. Uh, I'm not sure why this is not that helpful, I guess. And let's try again. Let's do over here. And let's see if it tells it anything down here, which is should down the bottom. It says um, insert one is not a function. Okay, so insert one is not part of, I guess, or part of Mongoose. Interesting. I thought it is. Um, so that means we can't use insert one. So we use insert many, I guess. Let's try that. So let's save that, go back to the Postman and try again. Okay, so let's close this and just send. There we go. So we got the message back, we can get the same object back. So the result is that maybe uh, MongoDB sends the same object that you created, you just added, it. it sends it back to you. Okay, so we can verify this as well in MongoDB. So let's go over here and check that we should have 103, I mean four, if I refresh this. So we get 104. Now to go to the last one, just keep, just keep going all the way to the end. Here we go, the last one. And here is the Harry Potter um, object we just created. Okay, now remember that when I made this, uh, add this object in the code, you know, I just manually put it here, right? I just manually put it here. If I run it again, Okay, because the student object uses a schema. This schema says the ID is unique. Okay, that means I cannot have duplicates. Same thing with the email address. So if I go ahead and do it again, this should fail. It should not re-insert this data. And we can give it a try again, go into no, uh, Postman and just click up post again. Uh, okay, you got a message back, but we'll see if it's still, um, in the database. So we should have, if it's correct, we should not get 105. As, but it did add 105. So I think it probably did not follow my rule. Um, yeah, I have a I have a duplicate here, right? So um, somehow this didn't work for some reason. Um, but uh, but let's see, let's see if we can do um still insert me. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's not. Hmm, interesting. Okay, yeah, I have to figure out. Usually this is, it should not let you insert uh, um, duplicate data. Okay, but this time I'm gonna do this way. I'm gonna go ahead and, and not use this. I'm gonna get this from the uh, front end. So you put here const data still. Uh, here we coming from the request body and they wanna insert that data here, okay? So I'll clean this up a little bit. That is for the post. And then for the other ones, like the delete and update stuff, I'm gonna go and just copy this. Put down here, see what I'm typing. 
and this is going to be for the put. What do we need for the put? We need the ID and the payload. So the payload will be same as this. Copy this, put it here. I need the ID. So the ID will be um, I need to convert that to a number, the response, that params, that ID. Okay. And then when you do a update, you want to call the up call the update function. As you can see, update mini, update one. We update one. And the inside here you have two things. One is the filter, the second is a set key like that, and you pass in an object. Okay. This is the setup for that. So you call the update one. What are we updating here is based on what? We're based on the ID. So you put here the ID is equal to the ID. So just make sure that we do call it ID, okay? So if this is ID, ID, the same key and value, then typically you just call it ID. Save your typing, okay? It's just in the nature of object in JavaScript. So this is the same as saying ID of ID, okay? And then for the set, what are we changing? Are we changing only a certain field or are we changing the entire object? That's entirely up to you. If you change everything, then you pass in the whole object. Like the data here will be the whole object that you put here, data, all right? If I'm just changing like the first name, then you have to put here the field first name, okay? Like name, and then you pass in the new data, would be data. And then here you will have to make sure you get only the first name, all right? Or I should call it first name here, like this, right? First name and then first name. So again, same rule. If it's first name, first name, just first name, okay? So I'm updating only one field. If you update only certain fields, you do that. Easiest way is, of course, you just replace the whole thing, right? So that means just, you know, replace everything, call it data, and then just replace the whole thing as data. And then you don't have to put it in, in curly braces because it's already in curly brace. So I'm replacing the entire uh, object, okay? So that is for the put, okay? You can do many or you can do one. If you put many, then you wanna put a different API um, I mean, uh, endpoint, right? And then down here will be the delete one. So it's put here, very simple. Um, this is the delete. We we'll delete one, so again, we need the ID, but the body, we don't care. And then the delete would be just delete one. And you pass in just the ID, matching that ID, then we are good to go. That is the delete. Um, I missed the here. And then down here as well. And then finally, we need to delete all. This is the most dangerous one. We don't need the ID here. Just go directly to the students address and then down here I don't need the ID either and all I do is delete you can put delete many here and then you pass in a blank object we'll just leave it blank like that this is it's gonna wipe up everything okay so it's this is a very dangerous one there's no undo either um you can pass it here you can also pass in here the object of let's just say I want to delete all the um maybe all the like gender if I have a gender of the, all the male. If I do that, then it's going to delete all the records that have a gender of male only, right? So you can filter that many. How if you put one like this, delete one, and if you do that, then it will only find the first occurrence and it's going to delete that one and then it stops, okay? So it's just something to think about. But we don't want, but we do want to delete everything. So we're going to put empty object here and then delete everything, okay? So that is it. Um, let's go ahead and give it a test. Now, before I do that, I want to make sure I have a copy of my data first. Um, so just to be safe, right, I'm going to export this out and I'm going to save to the full collection out all the fields and then save it as a JSON data and I'll put it inside um, just on the desktop for now. Okay, student object, save it here. Just in case I, if I lose it. All right, so now let's go ahead and verify our data. Let's go to the postman. And again, if I post another student here, I'm gonna get, so now you can see that it has some error, right? What is the error? Well, let's go figure it out. And here, um, now we say, now here it is, is 
ID is required. Hmm, did I forget something there? Um, for the post. Uh, I don't know why these required here. Um, hmm. Oh, because I didn't put any record here. I see it's an empty object. Okay, so so let's let's make a copy of that object earlier. So this guy right here, All right? Undo this. I'm gonna cut this out. Okay, say this one, and then I go over here, put it into the body, and then make this a little bit bigger. And we don't need this whole thing here, actually. Um, yeah. So that is the data. It is going to be JSON data. And then we're going to add that to the database, see if this works. Boom. And there it is. We have a data coming back saying we add it. Again, it did not follow that unique key thing. It should have, but for some reason, it's not working. Um, I have to, ver have to verify. So let's add another one. Let's put, you know, it's just a number, another name to say, but let's put here Larry instead. And we're gonna add and boom, okay? We got that one there and then we can do a return. Get the ID of that student call 1212, ID 1212, and we got it back, right? And then uh, we can verify as well, make sure it's there. It should be there. We have 105, now we have 107 and all the way to the end, it won't let me do all of them. So here we have the last two, 1, 12, 12 and 11, 111, all right? And we have three of them, right? We have three, three one elevens. So we're gonna delete those three one eleven. Um, so let's go and delete them. So go to the delete. We're gonna pass in here one one one. Okay, delete. And we got an error. So let's see what's going on. Again, we're not sure. Go back to your console and look and see what it says. It says. Um, ID is not found here. Okay. Oh, it's, it's rec, not rest. So what I put, it should be a rec. Um, so that's rec, up here should also be a rec. And we're good, okay. So let's try again. All right, so let's go and delete 111. Boom, okay, we got it. It says acknowledge is true, we got one deleted. Now we can try to get it back. It should not be there. We got it. Uh, what we do have because we have a couple of them, right? So let's keep deleting those until they're all done, okay? Delete, just delete one. So again, again, and then now it's zero, so there's no more, right? So now you get it back. You should not get that anymore, okay? And then we can verify, and the database, just refresh it. You see that it goes back to 104. It should not be there anymore at the end of that. So there's no more Harry Potter here, okay? So that works just fine. Now, the next one here is the delete all. This guy right here, the dangerous one. So we move that ID number, go to the delete, and here we go, boom. Okay, 104 of them deleted. And if you try to delete again, you're gonna get zero. There is no more to delete, okay? You can confirm getting the data back. It's not there anymore. And we can verify in the database as well there is none in here anymore, all gone. Yay, perfect, right? <laughs> so there you go. That is how you do these operations using Mongoose. Uh, as you can see, it looks very similar to the MongoDB library. The only difference is that you set your schema and you create your models and then you make the connection. So all these functions are similar to the MongoDB uh, collection um, library here, right? It should be the same. All right, so I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, again, please put in the comment or just let me know and I'll be more happy to help. Thank you so much.